Uh, our, our headline tonight, man, this show has been over a year in the making, man. We were supposed to have this guy headline about a year ago, and then uh, something crazy happened anyway. Uh, something you don't need to worry about now. Everything's fine. And, uh, uh, <laughs> shut up. Uh, anyway, uh, so we're super excited, man. This guy has been one of our favorite comics, and he's been working super, super hard on this set, so I'm going to ask you guys a favor. I know I know it's late night. I know we had a few drinks. Some people getting chatty. Give this guy some space. Let him get into it, man. He's going he's to do a long set right now. He's worked hard on let him get into it, man. This guy is the two-time roast battle champion of Taipei. Here at 23 Comedy, please welcome for the first time going long, it's Matan Shalome! Great to have you. Thank you all for coming and seeing you play. You know, yeah, like Sam said, I was supposed to do this last year, but, you know, a lot of stuff got canceled. So many things, you know, bars were closed, nightclubs were closed, movie theaters were closed. That was terrible. You know, I didn't have it that bad. Think how difficult it must have been for the previews guy. You know, the guy with the deep voice who does all the movies for all the trailers. Like, right. what was he doing for 2020, 2021? Nothing came out <laughs> that year. He must have been so bored. It's like, previous man. What, uh, what should I do this weekend? This Saturday. <laughs> Mangoes are on sale at the food market. <laughs> Previous man, tell me, do you think the pandemic will be over in the summer? This summer. <laughs> From the studio that brought you the Delta variant. <laughs> And the unvaccinated airline pilot from New Zealand, who's probably already infected with whatever Greek letter comes after Omicron. Comes the sequel nobody asked for, that will have you staying indoors all over again. Tell me, previous man, do you have any particularly strong opinions about transgender athletes competing in women's sports? In a world. Where the line between genders is increasingly blurred. One man, or one woman, will change the face of international badminton forever. Rob Schneider stars in The Buff Chick. Uh, everyone doing well tonight? For those of you who don't know me, I'm gonna be the only comedian tonight with a doctorate. Yeah. All right, calm, calm down, calm down. It's not a, it's the shitty doctorate. It's, it's a PhD, not an MD. My prescriptions are useless. I've been giving Jonah high chew, telling him it's his antipsychotics. Useless. <laughs> But of course, since I have a PhD, that means I'm one of the few foreigners in this room who is not an English teacher. I'm an English professor. It's different. It's different. I mean, I'm not going to lie. You, I've used it. Like, a month ago, I got pulled over by a cop on my scooter. What? Do I look like I can drive? Come on. He pulls me over and he says, do you know why you pulled you over? And I say, no, officer. And he says, you were speeding. And I say, officer, I'm a doctor. Have you not read Einstein's theory of relativity? <laughs> Speed is relative. You say I was speeding, but from my frame of reference, I was standing perfectly still. You were going backwards incredibly quickly. You say I broke the rules of the law. Officer, if you give me a ticket, you'll be violating the laws of physics. <laughs> The police officer says, Sir, I have studied physics, and I don't think you understand the gravity of the situation. <laughs> Speaking of physics, you guys know who had a lot of sex? Stephen Hawking. That guy fucked. No, seriously, I mean, you know, he got married, had kids. Yeah, he couldn't get up. He could get it up. <laughs> Cheats on his wife with his nurse. Leaves a nurse for a mistress, gets back with the wife. The guy had two weaknesses, stares and commitment. <laughs> How did he do it? I swear he must have pre-programmed pickup lines into that computer of his. See, 
the only explanation, you know? He wheels up to the prettiest girl in the bar and he's like, Hey girl, did you fall from heaven? Because that would make you a meteorite. Your molecular structure can tell us much about the early days of the solar system. Why don't you come back to my place so I can probe you? Hey girl. I have calculated the ideal solution to the three-body problem. You, me, and your sister. Hey girl. You look tired. Have a seat. Hey girl. My favorite planet in the solar system is your pussy. You know who probably doesn't have any trouble getting laid are Olympic athletes, right? That's a sexy thing. No, no one's feeling that. I know. I would, I don't know. But you know, now I'm thinking it, there's a hierarchy, you know? They're not all sexy sports. You know, you've got your sexy ones and then you got your less ones. Now let's just go to the bottom. Curling? Yeah. Yeah. You know curling, with, you know, with, they push the rock on the ice, people walking in front of Buddha Broom? That's not sexy. There's, Telling someone you have the body of an Olympic curler is not a compliment. I have the body of an Olympic curler. Anyone who's been on stage today has the body of an Olympic curler. Sam, you went to school in Canada. He may actually be an ex-Olympic curler. It doesn't take much athleticism to be a curler. I think the biggest obstacle to being an Olympic curler is being willing to admit that you are an Olympic curler. Do you think the curlers get bullied by the other athletes? They get made fun of. A curler, a curler, yeah, yeah. So like the curlers, you know, imagine just the most confident Canadian curler in the athlete's village. He goes up to the cutest looking Chinese gymnast and he's like, oh hey there, my name's Mark. <laughs> You know, I'm uh, the number one curler in all of Saskatchewan. Why don't you uh, come back to my place? I'll show you how I handle my broomstick. <laughs> and then the uh, Chinese figure skater goes, hey, I'm 12. <laughs> I had a woman come up to me two weeks ago and say, you look like a vegetarian. <laughs> Well, fuck you too, lady. <laughs> not you, you're great. The other one. Uh, like, that's also not a compliment. Calling, no one wants to be told they look vegetarian. This is why veg vegans are always telling you they're vegan. They're assuming you don't know. Like, this, there's, no, there's no circumstance where that's gonna be acceptable. Like, telling someone they look vegetarian is telling them, you look healthy, but still dying somehow. <laughs> Gentlemen, imagine a circumstance. You're at home, your girlfriend comes out of the bedroom. She's like, honey, does this dress make me look vegetarian? What would you say? Or before that, you know, you're at the nightclub, making out with someone, things are going good. Move to the next level, take them home to your place. She reaches her hand down your pants and goes, oh, you must be vegetarian. <laughs> oh, uh, what else about me? Oh, I'm your only Jewish comedian tonight. <laughs> so how? Jews invented comedy. True. Yeah, fuck all else to laugh at. I don't know, there's, there's a lot of Jews in Taiwan. I think Jews and Taiwanese people get along really well. We have a lot in common. We both have this appreciation for education. We both have parents that are constantly nagging us to have grandchildren for them. And we both have homelands that are only partially recognized by the international community. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's a Jewish holiday right now. It's Passover, right? Yeah, yeah, it's Passover. Sam making me work on a Passover. Screw you, Sam. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Passover, English translation of the Hebrew word Pesach, meaning to pass over. Chinese name for the holiday. I think it's Yue, Yue Jin. Oh, you got it, yeah. Translates from English, passing over. You know what they call Passover in French? Pâques des Juifs. Jewish Easter. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my
They're French. <laughs> oh, pop you too, France. <laughs> I'm just sorry. <laughs> French person apologizing. I forgive you. You have your own thing to worry about now. I've been watching the election, so you're going to be fine. I had a woman tell me, you look like Jesus. I don't see it. I don't, nothing. No, I get it, I, I get it. I take up a lot of room on the bed, I sleep like this. I had someone date me, I think they were dating me exclusively because I look like Jesus. You ever had someone of this, someone with a savior fetish? It's weird. You know, did all the Jesus-y things, you know, wash my feet, dry them with her hair. <laughs> the one person who read the Bible laughing, thank you, thank you. <laughs> if I woke up with a morning wood, she would go, he has risen. <laughs> and boy, I think she was even happier than I was if I had a second coming. <laughs> <laughs> had to end it though, had to end it. I found out she was into autoerotic crucifixion. <laughs> right, right. No, I had to end it, so I thought, what would Jesus do? So I ghosted her. <laughs> Last text message she sent was, you'll be back. Three days from now, you'll be back. I don't know, I miss travel. Traveling was fun when it lasted. If I met, as soon as they open borders, I'm gonna go to Southeast Asia. They got all the good stuff there, good food, everything. Uh, the crazy thing, anybody here, what do you guys think of durian? Has anyone, has anyone here not had durian? You know durian, it's that brown, spiky fruit, kind of looks like a giant hedgehog scrotum. When you cut it open, it's full of this like white, soft flesh, kind of like a giant hedgehog scrotum. Anyone here not had giant hedgehog scrotum? Yeah, it's, you know, smells awful. People love it. They love it in Southeast Asia. It is everywhere. It is their pumpkin spice. They put it in everything. It's in coffee. It's in crackers, cakes, milkshakes. Craziest thing I saw, and this is absolutely true, durian-flavored condoms. And we all know smell is 50% of taste, right? Why? Why would you want your dick to smell like you already used it? In both the holes. The one, the one that smells like durian, and the one that smells like durian. Awful, awful. Last place I traveled to was Palau. Anyone ever been to Palau? Anyone ever heard of Palau? You've been there. Palau is fun. Palau is one of uh, Taiwan's last allies in the Pacific. Nice place, nice place. Palau is also famous for their national food, bat soup. Yeah, that one. I went to Palau February of 2020. Yeah, everyone was talking about the bat soup, so I went to try it. And I did not get COVID. I got Nipah virus, it's much worse. You know, it's been a tough time to be affiliated with bats at all, I think. Yeah, I had a friend who had a bat cafe, closed down. Five years ago, but still. <laughs> Must have been really difficult to be Batman the last few years, right? Just think of the few conversations that have been going on in Wayne Manor. It's like, Alfred, go to the fight crime, I'll be back in three hours. Sir, we've been over this, you cannot go out, Gotham's in lockdown. What again? Come on, Alfred. Also, sir, I really don't think now is the time to be a bat-themed superhero. <laughs> really, Alfred? You think the people of Gotham are afraid? I'm gonna give them the coronavirus. Why would I think that? You do sound like you have a sore throat, sir. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is my scary voice. I am justice. This is what justice sounds like. At least go out wearing a mask, sir. I'm already wearing a mask. That's just the worst possible kind of mask, sir. Everything but your nose and mouth is covered. I don't have to take this from you. Where's Robin? Robin's in the hospital, sir. Oh no, did he? Oh no, 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 no. Bird flu. <laughs> Alright, fine, I'll stay home. Alfred, what's for dinner? We've been locked in the bat cave for months, sir. What do you think is for dinner? Palau and cuisine. Palau and cuisine again, sir. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking about the durian condom more. <laughs> 
Knowing in some ways, Durian is a lot like a dick. Specifically, my dick. <laughs> anyway, here not had my dick. <laughs> wow, that was surprisingly few of you. Uh, in fact, I made a list. Yeah, you're not the only, he's not the only one making lists. <laughs> Top five ways Durian is like my dick. <laughs> Number five, it's huge in Malaysia. <laughs> Number four, it tastes better than it smells. <laughs> Number three, it's probably come on a Taiwanese pizza at least once. <laughs> Number two, eating it is not part of a balanced breakfast, but should be. Uh, and number one, if you whip it out on the MRT in Singapore, you're gonna have to pay a fine. <laughs> I would love to watch a movie where the hero just doesn't want their powers, just like, really does not care for this. It's like, your X-Men mutation is, you can make snakes appear. I, I don't want that power. <laughs> I don't like snakes, I'm not gonna do that. It's like, help, help, there's snakes! I mean, help, help, my purse is being stolen, quick, make snakes appear. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm, I'm happy with the current level of snakes. I don't think the situation will be improved with the addition of more snakes. All right, I've got an idea for a pilot. Let me walk you guys through this. Some archaeologist, you know, goes to a temple, restores an artifact, and then we hear a booming voice from outside. It's like, you have restored the sacred artifact. The spirit realm will grant you a boon. You now have the power to control the weather by eating ass. It's like, sorry, what? <laughs> Wind, water, lightning, snow, all yours to command and control. Go back to the, why ass? <laughs> I don't like ass. I've not eaten ass before. I wasn't planning to start. It's like, you really should practice. The world needs you. Climate change and shit. Also, the spirit realm has already informed the Justice League of your new powers. Your superhero name is the Rimmler. I don't want to be the Rimmler. I don't like this. It's like, too bad, you're already in the uh, superhero line group. Your avatar is a hurricane, but the eye of the storm is an anus. Why do you have access to my social media? The spirit were almost purchased by Elon Musk. Oh, you have a message from Greta Thunberg. She says she looks forward to working with you to fighting climate change. Huh. Is she? Do not eat the ass of Greta Thunberg. If this was your life now, would you accept it? Would you, just, would you own it? You know, everywhere you go, people are like, oh no, there's, there's, a, there's a storm brewing. Oh no, and there's a, t a big tidal wave heading towards the beach. It's gonna hit that bus full of orphans. Oh, if only someone could do something about it. Let me get a closer. Yes, there's definitely a tidal wave. Oh man. I knew you'd like that seat. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, I have been very happy you've all been here, and as I said to Sam Sex in the all-comedian orgy, I'm gonna get off now and let Sam finish. <laughs> <laughs>